Hello and welcome to Sports Update. I am Emmanuel Fashimi. Let's start, uh, you know, we always talk about uh, uh, these sports on uh, Trust TV, cricket sports, uh, where Nigeria is doing so well. Uh, uh, fantastic in, uh, uh, when it comes to cricket, the Federation, the Nigerian Cricket Federation has been uh, putting up programs, has been putting everything together to ensure that uh, these sports become uh, uh, a household name in Nigeria. And at this point in time, our guest, the Yellow Greens ladies, uh, will be far away in Namibia for the T20 uh, World Cup qualifier that will happen uh, in Bangladesh and the United Arab Emirates. It's a good one. Let's not forget that uh, the male counterpart lost their own ticket, uh, the qualifiers, where that, that one will be coming up in West Indies and uh, uh, the United States of America. But this time around, the women will be um, playing to qualify for the uh, T20 uh, World Cup that will happen in Bangladesh and uh, uh, the, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, next year and for the yellow greens uh, uh, cricket team the list has been released we have our players uh, who have been in camp at the uh, high tech cricket over in Benin city at those state where they've been camping for uh, for the, almost uh, two months plus right now and now finally after 18 players were invited to that camp it was streamlined uh, to 14 players who will be representing Nigeria at the qualifiers in Namibia. That is the Yellow Greens uh, uh, women that uh, will be going to Namibia for that uh, qualifiers. And it's a good thing that uh, uh, the household names, uh, the players we know uh, with this team uh, made the list. They are still there. And uh, one, uh, one player, uh, particularly, uh, who is the captain of the team, is still uh, with the side and co with a couple of other players who have been uh, lined up uh, for that uh, particular. Let's quickly have the list. Let's have the list uh, on the screen. Uh, let's quickly look at the list of players that have been invited for the uh, particular uh, qualifiers. No, we have uh, other uh, players who are on standby. So let's have the list on the, sc on the screen. Uh, this one was uh, the previous one. We have Blessing A Team, Favor Segbe. We have the players on standby on that list. So Nigerian players will be uh, battle ready for the qualifiers. And our first game will be against uh, Namibia on on sunday all right uh, if abba michael is ready let abba michael join us on the show this evening uh, let's look at uh, uh, the cricket uh, uh, team that has been invited for this particular uh, qualifiers uh, in namibia our first game is against the host on sunday michael said and done our, our girls uh, need to uh, make this work for us I mean, uh, for those who have been selected, we, uh, we expect them to give their best. We expect them uh, to give 100% to ensure that we still disqualify. Her. I mean, cricket is one sport that we're still trying to find our feet. And so we look forward to, I mean, the selected players uh, making the nation proud, doing us proud, justifying their selection and ensuring that uh, they're able to take the opponents down in the media. Uh, so we can only uh, give them our blessings and wish them all the best as they go for this encounter. Yes, as they go for this encounter, the, their first game will be against the host Namibia on Sunday. And in Group A, we also have uh, Rwanda in that group. You know, <laughs> Rwanda is, uh, um, let me say, they are very tough not to crack. But I think the women, uh, because the guys couldn't get it, uh, their own uh, uh, ticket, where well, we lost that just uh, a, la a few weeks ago, and now the women will be playing theirs. Do, do you see the women uh, picking the ticket for the uh, uh, T20 ICC Cricket uh, World Cup? Yes, of course, I see them picking it. Uh, in Nigeria, what a man cannot do, what a man can do, a woman can do better. Uh, when our men couldn't go to the uh, FIFA, World Cup, we saw our women going to the FIFA World Cup. And when, when our men uh, couldn't give us good performance in AFCON for quite some time, we see our women, except maybe for the last edition that they came forth. So I believe so much in the Nigerian women. The Nigerian women are the pride of the nations. And I believe these cricket uh, ladies will toe the same line and make us proud by taking down Namibia. 
Okay, but I've taken down Namibia. I think that first game uh, uh, we uh, tell how prepared, how well they prepared for this tournament. The top two teams will qualify for the uh, will qualify for uh, the uh, event in United Arab Emirates and Bangladesh. Though the top two teams first, uh, that is from each group, will qualify for the semi-finals, and the finalists uh, will qualify automatically to the World Cup in 2024 in United, uh, United Arab Emirates and uh, Bangladesh. That is where the women uh, ICT, uh, ICC T20 World Cup will be coming up. That's for cricket uh, sports, I uh, beg your pardon. For the men, it will, ha it will happen in United States uh, of America and Wednesday in this. For the ladies, it's going to United Arab Emirates and Bangladesh. So we hope that the Yellow Greens uh, team, women team of Nigeria, we be in that uh, competition after the uh, being in camp for quite some months right there in Benin City, Edo uh, State. Okay, let's uh, leave that story. Uh, still talking about Nigerian uh, uh, sport. Now let's look at uh, this particular story. It concerns uh, basketball where Customs and AXPAC of Benin Republic has uh, picked the FIBA African Zone 3 ticket that, that will have the qualifiers properly will happen in Cairo, just a few days away from now, that qualifier will be uh, uh, will be dunking off uh, in Cairo. And before the uh, for the customs ladies, they won two games and they, they they won the qualifiers here in Abuja. But for the MFM women, they lost their first game to Aspark ladies, and uh, they couldn't also do it against uh, the customs ladies. Now the customs won two games uh, so far, and they won the uh, championship fair and square. These two teams picking the, the ticket. Now uh, how what is uh, our expectations for the custom ladies uh, in Cairo, Egypt. Three days away from now, that qualifiers will be starting in Egypt. Well, uh, of course, my worry has been the fact that uh, our basketball has been in crisis. I mean, but for Nigerian customs to be able to uh, put themselves in a good position for this, uh, I think that it's quite commendable. It shows uh, that uh, they're able to overcome uh, storms just to be able to uh, get the team to this position and uh, despite the crisis i see them uh, coming out on top uh, for the fact that they're able to uh, overcome local crisis and uh, be in this po position i mean for this fever uh, africa zone three tickets i believe uh, it's it's uh, they are going definitely going to prove themselves and like i said it's the women again uh, we look forward to seeing them uh, making us proud and of course, nipping this to the board. Okay, making history, making us proud. The qualifiers will be uh, uh, starting on uh, December 11, a few days away from now, right there in Cairo. So no time to rest. These guys immediately after this competition, they're uh, leaving the shores of this country. Now, uh, Michael, let's quickly digress a bit. If you look at it, uh, the paramilitary and military in this country are contributing so much to sports. Why? Uh, those who are who, who are supposed to be responsible for contributing to sports uh, are, are, are sleeping. Yes, I mean uh, the Nigeria military games, I mean Air Force games, the Navy games. They take their sports so serious, and one of the prerequisites to join uh, all this military and paramilitary is sports. Uh, I remember in two thousand and eight or nine, I think I went for uh, one of the games. I almost uh, got the nod. Probably if I had gotten it, I would have been a first person today. So <laughs> the, sport, the military and paramilitary give opportunities for sporting heroes uh, to be able to uh, make themselves, give, give themselves opportunity to get into the army, get into the federal civil service workforce. And uh, a, a teammate of mine in 2008 was able to get into the, even the Nigerian army as a result of sports. So this paramilitary, this military, the great platforms to accommodate sportsmen and women because you need people who are fit, I mean, to be able to mount the security of this country. And that's why you always see that so many of them emerge and become stars. Uh, one of the fastest men in Nigeria in 2010 was a teammate of mine from Plateau here. He is a soldier. I mean, he's, mm -hmm. an, he's, a, he's in the Nigerian army. His name is Benjamin Julius. Uh, you can go check the name out. So they provide platform for sportsmen to evolve. And that's the good thing. That's why you see Many of them get opportunities 
to go far with their sporting careers. Yes, uh, the likes of Choma Junwa, a police or a retired police officer right now, Julius Arawa, uh, who was also a policeman uh, before joining the Super Eagles. A lot of them uh, who has been doing so well uh, in the military and paramilitary. So we are proud and we are happy. Just of recent, we know uh, Judoka, who is a, uh, a commissioner of police, uh, who won uh, a medal just uh, a few months ago, uh, right there, uh, outside the shores of this country. So let's see how it turns, because the military and paramilitary are really contributing to sports development in Nigeria. Let all those who are responsible, who are supposed to develop our sports, at least take a cue, take a lead from the military and paramilitary. They should ask them, how are you doing it? And then we can probably uh, get it right and get better when it comes to sports uh, in this country. Okay, let's uh, leave that story. Um, it's a series uh, that we have been uh, having on the show. We're looking at uh, Nigerian uh, uh, sports uh, in the year 2023, the year that is winding down gradually. We've seen, we, have, we had our highs and we had our lows uh, uh, in sports. Uh, during the uh, the year on that review if you look at it nigeria at some point we were happy for some of our artists and at some of our artists we were disappointed but on this particular one though we were happy during the group stage and later on uh, we we're not happy but uh, it's a good thing that uh, we we're able to make it to the round of uh, uh, 16 we're talking about uh, the nigerian sports in 2023 let's look at this uh, a particular topic where uh, the nigerian flying eagles played in round two of uh, the under 20 fifa uh, world cup that happened in argentina and we defeated the uh, almighty argentina to qualify uh, to play in the uh, quarterfinal and we lost to uh, korea 2-0 in the quarterfinal michael if you look at it, uh, our sports in 2023, we had some of our highs and we have some of our lows. Now, this is part of our high uh, in the year 2023. Now, what's your take about Nigerian sports in the year uh, on that review? Yeah, I mean, we had a couple of highs, a couple of lows. Uh, we may not have achieved our set target, but we were able to make a run. I mean, we saw our, our FIFA women uh, we saw them doing their bidding. We saw them uh, qualify. Uh, we saw them uh, go to the World Cup. We saw them giving a good account of themselves. And of course, even our male, uh, we saw the, the journey so far when it comes to the uh, World Cup qualifiers or AFCON qualifiers, except maybe for the last two games. Uh, they've not done so badly. We saw our athletes go for the, I mean, the World Championship in athletics. Uh, we saw our Utobi and Musan get all the way to the finals. We saw the crisis she faced. She was able to overcome. And of course, uh, Flying Eagles, even able to uh, defeat Argentina, even though they fell to Korea. I mean, Argentina, it, a country we hardly defeat in any way for many years. I think that's a big high. It's a very, very big high amongst uh, other achievements. We saw Harina Quadri uh, going far in the ITTF, uh, sometimes in May. And I think he got all the way to. Uh, he's now, I think he's currently ranked 18th, but we saw him as high as uh, ranking 10th. So Nigerian sports, uh, so far, it may be just uh, above average, but I think uh, we made a good run. And also part of the highs is now that our, our, our MPFL matches are being transmitted live, I think it's also a big high. And then for the fact that we moved from a bridge league uh, to complete uh, league this season for last season, this is, so it's also another big high. So we've not done so badly. We need to maintain momentum and see how we can uh, take it to the next level in 2024. Yes, uh, take it to the next level in 2024. Good one for the Flying Eagles uh, playing in the quarterfinals where they lost to South Korea 2-0 in that game. But uh, we defeated Almighty Argentina, like uh, Mike mentioned, a team, a country that is always difficult for us to beat when it comes to football. And we're able to do it very in a very sweet way. We defeated them at their home ground. And that was one of the biggest achievements for the cadet uh, football uh, in Nigeria in the year 2023, the year on that. Uh, uh, review. Okay, let's uh, leave that story and go straight to Europe. Let's look at uh, EPA games that will be coming up tonight and uh, the big one uh, no matter how you look at it, no matter how the two teams are fumbling right now, they are still uh, one of the, they are still the biggest teams in the English uh, Premier uh, League. Now, let's look at those fixtures for tonight. We have Brighton, who will play Brentford. We have Crystal Palace against AFC Bournemouth. Fulham, we play Nottingham Forest. Sheffield United, who are at the bottom of the league table.
table. We play uh, Liverpool, Aston Villa. Uh, we play Manchester City and Aston Villa. This team uh, is a surprise package this season, though they started that since last season under Una Emery, and they are doing so well uh, this season. They will be at home at Villa Park to entertain uh, Manchester City and Manchester United. We welcome Chelsea to Old Trafford. These two teams are not at their best this season, but uh, it's still one of the biggest games in the English uh, football uh, history. Michael, now <laughs> these two teams who are not doing so well uh, uh, will be facing each other tonight in the English Premier uh, League. Yes, I mean, uh, mind you, they've had a couple of ups and downs, and then we've seen Chelsea uh, drawing against big teams and then losing against <laughs> other teams. I mean, they have. They've actually not come out of their spiritual bondage. I'm talking about <laughs> Chelsea, even though they said they claim that they are back, they are back, they are back. And when you say they are back, the next thing they receive four goals to one. I mean, you keep wondering after they come back, they are now sent packing or sent back again. I mean, Chelsea. But then I see a highly entertaining encounter tonight. I see back, but probably a two-two draw. Uh, definitely, we will see goals banging in left, right, and centre. Because both teams are weak defensively, and so we expect the players on the flanks to take advantage of that. So I expect to see perhaps a 2-2 draw or a 3-3 draw, but uh, it doesn't look like uh, Manchester are, are good enough uh, to, to compound the woes of Chelsea. And then Manchester City have to be wary of Aston Villa. Yeah. Aston Villa are top four right now. Una Emery is doing a great job there. I mean, Ruiz Douglas is... He's doing, he's, he's bidding. I mean, the team is afloat. The team looks poised. Uh, Man City have had a couple of draws in the last three games. And uh, it may just be a fourth draw for them if they don't guard their post. Uh, because Tottenham have shown that Man City have been vulnerable this season. Uh, Chelsea has shown. Chelsea put in four goals. Uh, Tottenham put in three goals. Uh, of course, Arsenal defeated them. So Man City are quite vulnerable. Definitely a shadow. Of themselves and not what the firepower they had last season perhaps with the uh de Bruyne's injury is quite it's really affecting them and then the departure of uh, gundogan and then riyad Mahrez. i think those guys uh they really left with a lot of uh, anointing and the team is virtually crawling right now even though they're still they're still a threat they're still a favorite but then i think uh, it's an opportunity uh, for us now, now that they are five points ahead or six points ahead of Man City to uh, maintain the lead, knowing that Man City may likely, may likely still have a draw against Aston Villa. Uh, but then, uh, it's we, we are looking forward to it. I see Liverpool getting an easy win, no doubt. Against uh, Sheffield United. walk in the park, even though they are not. Yes, I mean, they are at the bottom of the table. Uh, Sheffield United are, are a team that I believe with Liverpool's long balls and uh, they should be able to uh, take down i think their coach has been sacked my mom is and they've gotten a new coach so, chris wada yeah let's see if chris wada will be able to uh, tie the, the team up and ensure uh, that they stop getting embarrassed but then i see in liverpool uh they are the closest thing to Arsenal right now i see them uh, picking easy three points Okay, you see Liverpool picking AZ three point. Chris Wada is, ha is having his second spell with Sheffield United, and his first game in charge will be against uh, Liverpool. Let's see how he's going to contain the firepower of Don Nunes, uh, uh, Mo Salah, Alexander Arnold, who is scoring goal, a defender. Uh, who's going to go right, left, and center? Let's see how uh, that team is going to contain the firepower of this guy, Luis Diaz, and co uh, of Liverpool. But for Chris Wilder, he's the, this is the second spell with Sheffield United, and they are at the bottom of the table after they sacked their coach named Hekin Bottom. Hekin Bottom was sacked, and Sheffield United was at the bottom of the table. All right, let's uh, leave that. There are some other games that will be coming up tonight in cup games. Uh, we have cup games in Italy. We have, then we have a league game in the French uh, Legon. In the Coppa Italia, we have a uh, Fiorentina taking up, uh, taking up uh, Pam, uh, Parma. That is a uh, Coppa Italia in the uh, Italian Serie A. That is in Italy. And then in Legon, we have Marcel against uh, uh, Lyon. Lyon is not doing so well. They have seven points. And they are at the bottom of the table of uh, League One. And let's see how they are going to take on Marcel 
uh, tonight uh, in that uh, particular game. All right, let's move straight uh, to this last one on the show. Let's talk about NBA right now. There were two games uh, uh, last night uh, in the early hours of uh, uh, today in uh, the NBA. We have New York Knicks uh, who lost to Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, champions, uh, uh, 146 to 122 uh, points for New, uh, New York Knicks. And Phoenix Songs uh, also lost by three points to LA Lakers, uh, 103 to 106. Michael, this is one of your best spots. And these two, this, this, these two games were, in fact, it was a firepower, mostly the game of Phoenix Songs and uh, LA Lakers. Yes, I mean, I was awake uh, last night to watch the Phoenix Suns uh, versus LA Lakers. I mean, we saw Kevin Durant getting into foul trouble. We saw Devin Booker getting into foul trouble. I mean, they are arguably the most dynamic scoring duo in the league right now, apart from uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown of the Boston Celtics. Uh, we saw them in foul trouble, five fouls each. I said they had to be careful. They couldn't play good defense. And uh, LeBron James, an experienced veteran, with, uh, he, I think he had 31 points, and he's, he's, he, was, he was almost 39 years old, and he has 39,000 points. I gone in for his 40,000 points, perhaps before the end of the season. I think it was LeBron's experience, and that's why he's in the GOAT conversation. And that's why he was able to change things for the Lakers. He came up in the clutch. We saw his son in the stands. That LeBron James that won for the Lakers, his son just uh, got uh, a scholarship to play for uh, United, uh, uh, Southern California. Yes, University of Southern California. Uh, Bronny James is his name. Uh, he wants a father and son to be in the league by the same time next season. So if his son performs well this season, the son will be in the NBA next season, which will be LeBron James' 22nd season in the league. So the, for the first time, if the boy performs, we'll be seeing a father and son playing at the same time in the league. We've had several fathers and sons Playing the league at different times, but never have we ever seen any play at the same time. So LeBron James' longevity may be able to uh, enable him and his son set that record for a father and a son playing at the same time. He said that is what he's waiting for before he retires. Uh, after uh, maybe when he plays in his 22nd season, already he's the all-time leading scorer. And then, of course, let's not uh, take away Yanis Adetokounmpo, uh, who's uh, I think 35. Uh, 41 points, 35 points for the Milwaukee Bucks. I uh, was able to see them defeat the New York Knicks. Uh, we saw Julius Randle, 41 points. I mean, and then the other, busy uh, Barry, so uh, Barrett, 23 points. It was not enough. Uh, Yanis Adetoku, well, uh, alongside Damian Lillard, the guy they called Dame Time. I mean, we were able to put the New York Knicks at bay. Uh, and I think it was at Madison. Uh, Square Garden. Uh, it's a semi-finals. The NBA is doing what called in-season tournament. So it's a semi-finals. So the Bucks are now going to face the Indiana Pacers who were able to beat the best team in the league this season. Talking about Boston Celtics, the boss of uh, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. I mean, those two guys, the, the Tyrese Halliburton of Indiana Pacers was able to score 26 points, 13 rebounds, and a 10, a 10 assists to be able to beat the favorites for the season, Boston Celtics. So they'll be facing the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA in-season tournament. So it's, we're in for a thriller. Uh, so far, so good. The NBA season is getting hotter. And uh, we look forward to seeing Bradley Beal come back from injury so as to be able to help the Phoenix Suns, perhaps to their first title, if all remains healthy. If you Leave me, I can talk about NBA for the next 30 minutes. <laughs> All right, before we are in for a thriller. The in season, it is one of the best season when it comes to the NBA. Uh, for me, I, I don't know for any other person out there, but for me, I think I, this season has been one of the best uh, that I am enjoying so much uh, for over the years right now. Uh, since the likes of Michael Jordan, the Magic, magic Touch, uh, left the league, uh, retired from the NBA. Yes. I think I'm enjoying the NBA right now. All right, that is where we we'll leave it on Sports Up. Day. Michael, thanks for joining me this evening. And for your team in the NBA, well, let's see if they win if they win the in season. All right, that is it. Thanks for doing all you did on the show uh, this evening. Tournament. All right, uh, that is where we we'll leave it on Sports Update. I am Emmanuel Fashimi saying thanks for watching.